for so many unarmed black and brown human beings all across America. This verdict today is for them. Everybody can raise their hand. This verdict is for them. This verdict is for them. We, the jury, unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. Justice sometimes can feel elusive for mothers of black men, but for Allison Jean, her arms outstretched to the God she had prayed to on this day, justice had come. Amber Geiger, the former Dallas police officer who killed Allison Jean's son Botham in his own apartment, was unanimously convicted of murder. For his still mourning family and the joyous onlookers, this conviction represents something greater. This verdict is for Trayvon Martin, it's for Michael Brown, it's for Sandra Bland, it's for Tamir Rice, it's for Eric Gardner, it's for Antoine Rose. Today's victory gives a sense of hope and possibility and justice to the many people who were killed by the state and did not get any form of justice. The verdict marking the climax of a case that's captivated the nation for more than a year the breaking headline out of Dallas at this hour. A police chief there calls this a very unique case. Fueling a national conversation about race, police transparency, and one officer's use of deadly force. Last September, Amber Geiger, who'd been a police officer for four years, was returning home after a 13 and a half hour shift. It was around 10 p.m. She lived in apartment 1378 on the third floor. Directly above her in 1478, was Botham John's apartment. The St. Lucia native described by his friends and family as a ray of sunshine. Botham had a love for everything and everyone. So I just want the message of love to permeate throughout this whole process. John was an accountant and an active member of the Pearland West Church of Christ. You gotta let the spirit of the Lord let that fateful night, he was home watching TV and eating ice cream. And Geiger entered his apartment, saying she thought it was her own. She shot Botham, killing him in his own living room. This one stretched the imaginations and the goodwill of even the most generous supporters of the police. The idea that someone could walk into an apartment that's not theirs, to somehow convince yourself that that person is in your house committing a crime and your option is not to back out of the house, but to shoot and kill them. All those factors were incredibly hard to stomach. Today's guilty verdict flies in the face of national trends surrounding police killings. 106 non-federal law enforcement officers have been arrested in connection with fatal on-duty shootings since 2005. Only four convicted of murder. Experts say there's less data on off-duty shootings such as Geiger's, which could be even more concerning. But in Dallas, some believe the tide is shifting. Geiger is the third Dallas area police officer to be convicted of murder in recent years. Dallas is far from perfect, but they are showing what is possible when a institution commits itself to justice. Ladies and gentlemen, you have free innocent men. The trend, many say, is in part the result of so-called reformers, like District Attorney John Cruzeau, who campaigned on criminal justice reform and supported calls for Geiger to be charged with murder. It seemed to me that people were misinterpreting the facts of the case and what they meant legally. Mm -hmm. And so this issue of manslaughter, that it was manslaughter, I wrote, no, this is more appropriately a murder case based on the facts as reported. Cruzeau made headlines early on in his tenure, dismissing more than a thousand low-level drug cases during his first three months in office before backing a bill requiring police to turn over all of their evidence. The DA running on this platform of them going to prosecute police officers more and more definitely showed that the community is looking for this and the DA's office is listening. So help you guys. Yes. During the trial, Geiger testified in front of a diverse jury, eight women and four men, most are people of color, with five African-American jurors. She told the jury that she accidentally parked on the fourth floor and walked in. When she got to the door, she says she put the key in and it just opened. At that point, she heard someone inside. I knew somebody was moving around inside my apartment. I wanted just to find that threat. She says she saw a figure move toward her. In court, Geiger demonstrated how she says she confronted the person. I have, I have my gun pointed and I'm saying, let me see your hands, let me see your hands. What were you focused on? Him. Why did you fire? <laughs> I was scared. 
whoever was inside my apartment was gonna kill me. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to live with that every single day. I'm an off-duty officer. I thought it was in my apartment. And I shot a guy thinking that he was, thinking it was my apartment. Geiger's 911 call introduced as critical evidence. Okay, we have help on the way. I know, but uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna lose my job. <laughs> I thought it was my apartment. The Dallas County DA's goal, pointing out contradictions in Geiger's behavior, beginning with why she went into the apartment despite hearing noise inside. You could have called for help on your radio, and you could have had the cavalry there in two minutes. I could have. You could have had SWAT mobilized. It, they could have. And had you done any one of those things, Mr. Jean would probably be alive today. Right? Yes, sir. Defense attorney Brian Buckmeyer saying this was telling. When we look at the verdict that was given, murder, not manslaughter, it's obvious that the jury here believed that in opening the door, pushing forward, and knowing that there were sounds, someone inside, that her actions inside that home were intentional and not reckless. Therefore, that was murder. When you aimed and pulled the trigger at Mr. Jean, shooting him in center mass exactly where you are trained, you intended to kill Mr. Jean. I did. When your client is asked, did you intend to kill the person, the answer should be no. I intended to defend myself. Now, with Amber Geiger taking the stand and saying my intention was to kill him, it kind of negates the whole, but weren't you trying to defend yourself? Last week, prosecutors played the chilling body cam footage. This from Geiger's fellow officers scrambling to reach the fourth floor of the South Side Flats. Officers sprinting down a long hallway. You can see the bright red floor mat outside Jean's apartment. Something prosecutors point out was a clear sign Geiger should have noticed. You don't have a floor mat in front of your apartment, do you? I do not. On the body cam footage, several officers immediately start CPR, trying desperately to save Jean, something prosecutors say Geiger did not do. Did you properly perform CPR on Mr. Jean? No, I did not. And you could have, right? I tried to do a little CPR. Why would you try and do a little CPR on a man who's died who needs your full attention? Also pointing out that she stopped CPR during the 911 call in order to text her partner and lover twice, telling him to come to the scene. At both of those times, you put your needs and your wants over his. I still cared about him. While today's guilty verdict in the Geiger case may have brought one city a step closer towards holding police accountable, experts are still wary of any national shifts. Because Amber Geiger was found guilty, it doesn't fix the problem and it doesn't erase the long history that this country has of citizens dying and there being no justice. This jury had to make history in America today because both of them was the best that we had to offer. A 26-year-old, college-educated black man, certified public accountant, working for one of the big three accounting firms in the world. but. It shouldn't take all of that for unarmed black and brown people in America to get justice. For Botham John's mother, Allison, the verdict won't bring Botham back, but it may provide solace in a time of sadness for his grieving family. My life has not been the same. It's just been like a roller coaster. I cannot sleep. I cannot eat. It's just been the most terrible time for me. For Nightline, I'm Marcus Moore in Dallas. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.